Today we'll discuss chi-square tests. So there are two types of chi-square tests. The first one is the chi-square goodness of fit test and the second one is the chi-square test of independence. The first one is used if you have one categorical variable and you want to test a hypothesis about its distribution. So only one categorical variable. But the chi-square test for independence is used when we have two categorical data or variables for two independent variables and want to see if there is any relationship between the variables. So our focus for this video is the chi-square test for or of independence. So examples for this are number one is color related to gender. Number two is music genre related to intelligence. So take note, both of these are categorical. No? Color, you have gender. Number two, we have the music genre and the intelligence level. Next is the age related to political party. Okay, so we can categorize the ages. Now we have the adult or the teenagers, adult and the seniors. We can have that as categories and the different political party. Also, we have the skin color. Is it related to a nationality or a race? No, and last example is gender related to academic performance. So these are just some examples of categorical variables. No, if we are, if you want to uh, examine the relationship between two categorical variables, then we will use the chi-square test for or of independence. So the chi-square distribution. Chi is a Greek letter denoted by the symbol or by this symbol. And the chi-square is often denoted by this. So chi, the symbol, and square. Chi-square. So its distribu distribution looks like this. Now, if, you can com if you compare this to the normal distribution, of course, this is not symmetrical. Now look at the picture. It's not symmetrical at all. And it is determined, or the shape, depends on the number of degrees of freedom. So if you notice, if the degrees of freedom keeps on increasing, then of course, this will uh, approach a normal distribution. But of course, in general, it's not symmetrical and only defined for positive values. Take note, positive values only. So if you look at this, only for positive values values so our tests are ways are always going to be a right tailed test so there's no left tailed test always a right tailed test so for example consider the following example a poll was conducted among 600 canadians regarding their age and political preferences now this is the result so on the upper part we have the ages Okay, so categorized ng age. And we also have the preference, political preference. We have the liberal, conservative, and others. So this is now our contingency table. And of course, we will add some more row and column. So this is the problem using 0 0.01 as our alpha or level of confidence or level of significance. Can we conclude that there is a relationship between age and political preference? So in other words, can we conclude that age and political preference are dependent to each other? So let's try using the uh, hypothesis testing of test for independence for chi-square. But before that, let's complete first our contingency table. So let's add a row total. So this is a row total. And this one at the bottom is the column total take note when we say row it should be horizontal okay so liberal the total for liberal is 279 the le total for conservative is 237 and others is 84 so this means that we add 49 plus 71 plus 68 plus 91 equals 279 43 plus 61 plus 79 plus 54 equals 237 and 28 plus 18 plus 13 plus 25 equals 84. And for the column total, we add this from top to bottom. So 49 plus 43 plus 28 equals 120. 
71 plus 61 plus 18 equals 150, and so on. Now, take note that the total respondents is 600. So, it should be that if we add 279 plus 237 plus 84, the total is 600. Also, if we add 120 plus 150 plus 160 plus 170, the total is also 600. Okay, so that is the first part. Complete the contingency table by adding a row total and a column total. Next, take note that our N or the sample size is 600. Now, the observed values are the ones in the original table. So, these are the observed values, the 49, 43, 28, 71, 61, until 25, until this one. So, all of these are the observed values, okay? Now, the expected values for each cell are computed below. So, this is the formula. So, R means for the row, C is for the column, okay? So, ERC. So, we'll just multiply the row total times the column total and divide it by the number, number size or sample size, which is 600. So, example, for, for E11, meaning expected value of row 1, so this is row 1, okay, and this is column 1, 1, 1, okay, so column 1, so this is the 1. So, E11, how did we get 55.8? So, it's row total. So, row total is this, 279. So, that is why we have 279. Times the column total, which is equal to 120. So, times 120. Okay, and divide this by the sample size, 600. Using your calculator, you will see that it is equal to 55.8. Okay, another example, if you have this, the second cell, the row 1, this is row 1, column 2. This is the second column. So again, the total for the first row, first row is 279. And the second column or the column total is 150. So we have 279 times 150 divided by again 600, it, it is 69.75. Now for example, you want to compute E21, this cell. Okay, this is uh, column 2. Uh, row 2, so this is row 2, and column 1, so 2, 1. So the row total is 237, so 237 times the column total 120. Anyway, this is, uh, multiplication is commutative. So 237, 237 times 1. 120. 120. So it's still the same because um, multiplication is commutative, meaning if we have A times B, it is equal to B times A. So it's still that one. So divide by 600. So it's 47.4. So that is why we have 47.4. So computing all the cells using this one. So we have 59.25, 63.2. 67 point 15 16.8 21 22.4 and 23.8 okay so using this formula and following this okay so now we have this to check or if you want to check if your computations are correct so this is not necessarily important but if you want then you can verify if the sum of the expected values is equal to the row or the you may also check the column. Say, for example, if you, have, if you want to check the this one by row, so we have 55.8 plus 69.75 plus 74.4 plus 79.05, it should be equal or closer, closest to 279. Okay? As well as here for the second Row 47.4 plus 59.25 plus 63.2 plus 67.15. This is this must be equal to 237. And as well as with the third column, it should be 84. Third row, I mean third row. For the column, so you, you can add 55.8 plus 47.4 plus 16.8. So the total should be 120. 
69.75 plus 59.25 plus 21, it should be 150. And this column, the expected values for this one should be equal to 160. The expected values for this one should be equal to 170. Okay, next. So this time, this is now our complete contingency table. So this is now our complete contingency table. So we are now ready to compute for our chi-square test statistic. So this is now our chi-square test statistic. Take note of our notation. It has an asterisk. Okay, it has an asterisk. So chi-square asterisk. So this is our chi-square test statistic computation. So the formula is we just take the sum of this expression. Okay, so to understand this, this is the formula, the detailed solution. So the first one is for the this one, for the first cell. Okay, so 49 minus 55.8 divided by the expected value, so 55.8. Take note, oh, ERC divided by ERC. Okay, and also we have the square. Okay, next, we have this second, second cell. For this one, third cell for this one, and we have the fourth cell for this one. Next, this one is for this. Now you just follow the formula. Obser uh, the observed value minus the expected value and then take the square. Okay, by the way, that one is this one. And this one is this. This one is this. This one is this, this one is this. Okay, so input this on your calculator, or if you may. Okay, the result for each cell is 0.829. For this one, then we have 0 0.022, 0 0.551, 0 uh, 1.806, and so on. So these are the values per term for this one. This is 0.829 and this one is uh, 0 0.022. This one is 0.551 and this one is 1.806 and so on. So you just take the sum of these values. So the total is 22.095. So the chi-square computed is equal to 22.095. Now, let's go now to our hypothesis testing. Of course, we will start with our alternative and null hypothesis. So, this is always the null hypothesis. It should be independent. Okay, the two variables are independent. Okay, so the variables that we have been using in the problem is the age and the voting preference. So, the age and the voting preference are independent. Okay. And the alternative, of course, is the opposite. So the age and the voting preference are dependent, meaning they are related. So the variables or the null hypothesis is always independent and the alternative hypothesis is always dependent. Next is to compute for the, comp uh, for the critical value for the chi-square, we need the degrees of freedom. We need the degrees of freedom. Okay, to compute for the degrees of freedom, all you need to do is to first count the number of columns and rows. So, how many columns for this one? We have 1, 2, 3, 4. And for the rows, we have 1, 2, 3. Okay, do not include the row total and column total. Okay, I repeat, for the row, we have 1, 2, 3. There are 3 rows. And for the column, we have 4 columns. So, for the row, we have 3. So, there are 3 Voting preferences, and for the column, there are four categories for the age. So, following this formula, we have 3 minus 1 is 2, and 4 minus 1 is 3. Therefore, the degrees of freedom is 6. Okay? And based on the problem, we are given that alpha is 0 0.01. And based on our computation, from the previous slide, its degrees of freedom is 6. Now, the critical value is denoted by the chi-square without asterisk. And it is 
the degrees of freedom, comma, the alpha. Okay? So that is why we need the degrees of freedom and we need the alpha. Now, the degrees of freedom is 6. The alpha is 0 0.01. How did we get 16.812? We have this table. So, looking at this, the degrees of freedom is 6. And we'll just look for, at the, on the top part, we'll just look for 0 0.01. Okay, so this is 0 0.01. So, just like in multiplication table, so we have here. The value is 16.812. So, again, the degrees of freedom is 6 and the alpha is 0 0.010. Okay, so automatic that is 0 0.010. So, this is now the critical value. Remember that in the, our decision making, we need to compare the computed test statistic and the critical value okay so we need to compare this now the chi square that we have computed a while ago is 22.095 which is greater than 16.812 so take note if we have this curve say for example we have this curve now it's always on the right side the critical value is here 16.812 so, this must be a right tail test. So, this must be here. The shaded region is here. This is the critical region or the rejection region. Now, the 22.095 is here. So, 22.095. Okay. So, visually, we can say that the chi-square computed falls within the rejection region. Okay. So, meaning we reject the null hypothesis. Okay, we reject the null hypothesis. So, meaning in general, if your chi-square computed is greater than 60, uh, is greater than the critical value, then we always reject HO. Okay? Reject HO. Because this one is always, chi-square is always a right-tailed test. So, if, it, if your computed value is greater than the chi-square test or the critical value, then it is always reject. H O. So if we reject H O, H O is the independent word. So the age and voting preference are independent. So since we reject that, our conclusion is the H A. So the age and voting preference are dependent or they are related. Okay, you may practice this about job satisfaction. So a job sur a survey of two hundred workers was conducted regarding their education or level of education, either high school graduate, college graduate, or we have this a university graduate, and level of their job satisfaction, low, medium, and high. These are the results. So at 0 0.025, can we conclude that their education and level of job satisfaction are related? Okay. So, just follow the steps from our previous slide. So, start from, of course, from filling up this contingency table. Okay, you just add the row and the column total. So, after filling up the expected values and, and computing for the chi-square computed, you start again with the hypothesis testing, starting from the hypothesis, the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis up to conclusion okay so some of the answers so for your computation i hope you you may get the or you can get the chi square computed 2.694 and the, the chi square critical value is 11.143 so obviously this one is less than it's not greater than no since it's not greater than of course we fail to reject ho so, your conclusion should be education and level of job satisfaction are independent. So, thank you for watching.